I didn't see you there. Hello, beautiful fairies. Hello, river spirits. Welcome to my video. <laughs> so I wanted to get this video out way before spring ended because even though it is almost 100 degrees outside, it is still technically spring. And at first I was gonna put this video out on the day that summer solstice starts but then i got everything done way ahead of time so here we are this is one of the tops in this video and it makes me feel like a fairy so that is why i'm going to talk like this in the intro i hope you enjoy this video and without further ado let's get into it For some reason, designing the pieces for this video was a bit of a struggle. I knew I wanted to challenge myself with something I've never done before, but at the same time, it was hard to come up with something I was capable of learning fast enough to teach you all at my skill level, since I believe I'm still a beginner. I began with a sweater vest, I've always wanted to create a sweater vest, so I told myself I could do it and created a bunch of different templates and played around with yarn colors that I already had so I wouldn't have to buy anything new. A lot of these designs were pretty cute and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be making them all at some point in the future. I even decided to create some pants but then later decided to create mainly tops for this specific video so maybe I'll have a designated pants or bottoms video at some point. Once I decided on what I was going to make I practiced for a couple of days before writing out an actual pattern that I can show you all today and I'll show these practice pieces at the end of the video. For the different pieces in this video, you'll need a 4.5 millimeter hook, a 5 millimeter hook, an 8 millimeter hook, measuring tape, scissors, yarn, a darting needle, and stitch markers. For the yarn brands, I personally have been using old yarn I'm trying to get rid of, but a couple of brands I can name will be linked in the description box below. For the yarn weight, I used weight 4 and 5 yarn. You'll need to take a couple of measurements to accurately create the pieces for your specific body type. You'll need to measure your full arm length, half of your arm length, your full waist size, half of your waist size from one side to the other, your armpit to chest difference. You'll also need to measure your arm circumference based on where you'd want your arm warmers to begin at. This will make more sense at the arm warmer section of the video. I've been seeing this sweater sleeve thingy all over Pinterest, so I thought I would try it out, and it came out super cute, so this is the first piece I'll be showing you how to make today. To start, you'll need an 8mm hook and a 5mm hook. Now, this is entirely optional. The bigger the hook, the more loose and holy the piece will be. I'm also using three different yarn colors and textures for this piece. This is a very creative piece that you can do whatever you please with, but I'm just showing you how I made mine. The first thing you're gonna do is chain 60. This is a good amount for it to fit over my head, so if you have to chain more to get it over your head and to fit on your shoulders, then you can do so. After chaining 60, I joined the chain into a circle by slip stitching the last chain to the first chain I did. Make sure that the chain is going in the same direction so it won't get all twisted up. After I joined in the round, I chained 3. For this project, you're going to be using the treble stitch, which is becoming one of my favorites, honestly. What you're going to do is yarn over twice, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through. Make sure your ends are being held against the side of the project so you can easily weave them in as you go. You should have four loops on your hook. You're gonna then yarn over and pull through two. After that, repeat the process two more times, which is a yarn over and pull through two, and another yarn over and pull through two. And that's the treble crochet. To show you one more time, you're gonna yarn over twice, insert your hook into the stitch,
yarn over again and pull through, making sure you have four loops on your hook. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two, three times. Do this for the entire row. Once you get to the end of the row, you're going to finish your last treble stitch and then slip stitch to the first stitch to the opposite side where you did your chain of three. Chain three after slip stitching and turn your work. After your first row, you're going to actually try the project on over your head and then use stitch markers to mark where your armpits start in order to know where to increase and where to add the arms when it's time to. It should be a total of four stitch markers on the project, two in the front and two in the back. For mine in particular, I place the stitch markers on the sixth stitch from the side. After the stitch markers are where you want them to be, take the project off and continue to treble crochet all the way down until you reach one of the stitch markers. At the stitch marker, you're going to add a treble crochet into that stitch. After that, chain one and then add one more treble crochet into that exact stitch as the last one. This is how you increase. When you're adding your stitch marker back, make sure to place it in the second treble crochet you did because when you turn your work, you'll be able to see that stitch marker first to indicate where you're going to increase next. After you complete the increase, you're going to work one treble crochet into every stitch normally until you reach the next stitch marker. At that stitch marker, you're going to repeat the previous step, which is to add one treble crochet into the stitch marker stitch. Chain one. And add one more treble crochet into the exact same stitch, creating an increase. Continue to do this for each of the stitch markers until you complete the row, then slip stitch the row closed. For the third row, I'm adding my first color to the project as well as switching hook sizes from an 8mm to 5mm. To add a new color, all you have to do is wrap the new color around your hook, pull it through the loop, and then chain 2 with the new color. It'll be a chain of 3 because the first loop was when you wrap the new color around the hook and pulled it through. For the entire row, besides where the stitch markers are, you're going to add one treble crochet into each stitch like you did with the old color. Once you reach one of the stitch markers, you're going to increase, but this time it's going to be a tiny bit different. What you're going to do is look at where the stitch marker is and look for a gap in between the two treble stitches the stitch marker is located at. What you're going to do is create a treble crochet in the large gap instead of into an actual stitch. After that, chain one and add one more treble crochet into that gap. Then add your stitch marker onto the second treble crochet you did. After that, continue to treble crochet normally. Repeat this until you get to the end of the row.
at the end of the row after slip stitching to end the row. If you're using the same color, you can go ahead and chain three. If you're changing colors, wrap the new color around your hook and pull through, then chain two, which will be a chain three. Repeat the steps of the previous row. You're going to do this until the project falls close to your armpits and drapes nicely on your body. Once it reaches to where your armpits start, finish that row, slip stitch to end the row, chain three, and turn your work. What you do on this row is work normal treble crochets down the row as usual until you get to one of the stitch markers. Once you reach the stitch marker, you're going to create the armholes. So first, work on one treble crochet into every stitch down the row. Once you reach one of the stitch markers, add one treble crochet into the stitch where the stitch marker is. After, you're going to chain six. I chose six because that was the amount that felt most comfortable for my arms. After you chain six, slip stitch that chain of six to the other stitch marker so that the arms can be separated from the body. If you're unsure of how many chains you need to do for your arms in particular, start with six, slip stitch it to the other side, and try it on. If it's too tight, undo the slip stitch and add more chains until it fits comfortably. After you find out your particular chain size and it's slip stitched to the other stitch marker stitch, treble crochet down the body until you reach the other side of the project where the remaining two stitch markers are located. Once you reach the stitch marker, add one treble crochet into the stitch with the marker. Chain six, or the amount that works for your body. And slip stitch the chain to the opposite stitch marker stitch. After it's attached to the other side, continue with the regular treble stitches until you reach the end of the row. This is where I personally stop when it comes to making the body, but you can continue and create a longer body section if you prefer. To tie off, I chain one, cut the yarn, and pull it to secure. I did a total of six rows for the body. For the arms, you're going to have to attach the yarn to the project in order to continue them separate from the body. The way I attach my yarn is just by inserting the hook into the stitch I want to begin at, and then I'll wrap the yarn on the hook and pull it through. Then I'll chain three and begin treble crocheting, making sure to weave in the other end of the yarn as I go so that it stays attached.
Essentially, for the entire arm, you're just going to do rows and rows of treble crochets until the arm is long as you prefer. I personally did a total of 12 rows for each arm. If you want the arms to be more poofy, if that's the best way to describe it, you can add an increase into each row until it is as poofy as you'd like. But once you finish the amount of rows you want, it'll look like this, and then all you'd have to do is tie off and then do the exact same thing on the other side, and then you're done. This was by far the hardest pattern I've ever made so far, even harder than the patchwork cardigan I did as a beginner. But I was able to figure it out and now I can show you how to make it with ease. For the sweater vest, the first thing you're going to do is create the bottom ribbing. To do this, create a slip knot and chain 10. You can personally choose how long or short you want your bottom ribbing to be, but for mine, I preferred a chain of 10. After your chain 10, you're going to work half double crochets into every stitch of the chain. For a half double crochet, all you do is yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through the stitch. Making sure you have three loops on your hook, yarn over once more, and pull through all three loops on your hook. You're going to repeat this until you reach the end of the row. At the end of the row, chain one and turn your work. For the remainder of the bottom ribbing, you're going to work into the back loop of the stitches. I grabbed a brighter color yarn for this part so you can see the tutorial better, but essentially there's a front loop that is closest to you and then a back loop that's farthest from you. What you're going to do is work into the loop that is farthest from you, which is the back loop. So do what you usually do for a half double crochet, which is yarn over, insert your hook into the back loop, yarn over again, and pull through. Then making sure you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three Three loops. That's what you'll be doing for the entire bottom ribbing. At the end of each row, make sure to chain one and turn your work. For the bottom ribbing, if you're looking for a more fitted uh, fit, <laughs> Make sure that the ribbing is a few inches smaller than your actual waist size or where you want the vest to actually stop at. So where I want it to stop at, which is right under my chest, my original measurement is 28 inches. So I made sure my ribbing was actually 25 inches so that if I stretch it, it stretches to my exact size. If you want it to be more oversized, then you can go to your exact size so that when you put it on, it stretches to a more oversized fit. Once the ribbing is the size you want it to be, take a stitch marker and place it in the middle stitch of the ribbing as well as on either side of the middle stitch marker. This will help indicate which part of the vest is the front side as well as if it's the right side of the project or the wrong side. When you fold it in half, this is essentially what the vest will look like when it's sewn together. The next step is to add your new color. I'm using an orange here, but I later change it because it's a bit too Halloween for me. To add your new color, all you have to do is wrap the new color around your hook and then pull it through the loop. This is automatically one chain. After that, work down the entire project with half double crochets normally. You'll be working down the side of the ribbing so the stitches won't be as defined, but still work into every hole you can that's as close to the edge so it can look even. As you have Half double crochet make sure to weave in the old color as you go so you won't have to do it later on at the end of the row chain one and turn your work I change colors for my specific pattern but if you're doing only one color just chain one and turn if you're changing colors add the new color and then turn your work Continue the previous pattern, which is half double crocheting down the entire project. Here you can see I changed the orange to a more tan color and I think it flows way better than the pumpkin color I was using earlier. You're going to work all the way until you reach where you want to add your armholes and the front V part of the vest. For this section of the vest, you're going to only be working on the front side. 
so only work from the corner to the middle stitch marker as shown here. This was the part that was the most confusing for me when I was first figuring out the entire process of creating the vest. So you're going to see some lighting changes here and there due to me recording over the span of two days. What you're going to do first is figure out where the middle of the front of the vest is. To do this, count all of the stitches from the first stitch to the stitch that has the blue stitch marker. For me, this was a total of 39 stitches. I then added a stitch marker to the 17th stitch and the 23rd stitch. This will indicate where the opening of the V neck part of the vest is and helps you know where to work into and where to not work into. There are 17 stitches on the right side of the first stitch marker including the stitch marker stitch and there are 17 stitches on the left side as well. There is five stitches in the middle of the two pink stitch markers. I hope all of this made sense. Now attach the yarn on the fourth stitch on the area that is indicated as the front of the vest. So insert your hook, add the yarn over your hook and pull it through the stitch. Then chain one and work a half double crochet into that same exact stitch. After that, you're going to half double crochet all the way down to the stitch marker for that section. Once you reach the end, chain one and turn your work. Next, you're going to work into the second stitch from the chain one. So skip the first stitch and half double crochet down starting from the second stitch. At the end, chain one and turn your work and repeat. Skipping the first stitch, you're going to half double crochet into the second stitch and then go all the way down until the end of the row. Skipping these stitches decreases the project. You're going to decrease on both ends of the rows for a total of four rows. On the fifth row, only decrease on the inner part of the project. Here is a little drawing to understand it a bit better. Basically, for four rows, you're going to decrease at the beginning of each row. Once you reach the fifth row, only decrease on the inside of the rows, not the outside. This creates the V-look of the vest. You're going to do this for both parts of the front of the vest. Once it reaches the last four to five rows, or when it reaches to the point where there are only seven stitches left, I stopped decreasing and just worked half double crochets as normal. Once you finish, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. And this is what it should look like so far. I used stitch markers to hold the vest together on the side for this video. To do the back side of the vest, first attach your yarn to the stitch next to the stitch that the blue stitch marker is in by inserting the hook into the stitch and wrapping the yarn around the hook and pulling it through. Chain one and add a half double crochet into the same stitch. After that, work half double crochets all the way around until the end of the row. Chain one and turn your work. On this row, you're going to skip the first stitch like you did with the front of the vest and continue down with half double crochets. At the end, chain one and turn your work. And once more, skip the first stitch of the row. You're only going to do that twice. And after, for the rest of the back of the vest, you're going to work regular half double crochets until you reach the same length as the front of the vest. I personally added one more row to the back just so it can fit better, but you don't have to do this. Once you reach the end of the last row, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. This is what the vest should look like so far. 
The next step is to sew the sides together. For this step, you'll need a darning needle. I like to use the same color to stitch the sides as the parts that I'm stitching so it can easily blend, but you don't have to do this. Here's a little drawing of how you'll sew the sides together. You're going to stitch the sides under the armpits and then the top two panels, I guess that's what it's called, to the back of the vest like this. To sew the sides together, first insert your darning needle into the closest stitch to the ends as you can. I then like to cut a long piece of yarn, like 20-ish inches almost, and pull that through the darning needle. When I pull the darning needle, I pull all of the yarn, but I leave like 5 or 6 inches of a tail to weave in later. After that, I go back into the stitches, but I go through in a specific way. I'm going to skip through the video a bit so I can show you how to exactly do this with an easier to see yarn. Okay, so here I go into the back loop of the stitch that's on the bottom side of the vest and the front loop of the side of the vest, if that makes sense. So the bottom part of the vest is essentially under the part that my hand is resting on and in that I go into the farthest stitch away from me and then with the top part of the vest that my hand is actually resting on, I go into the closest stitch to me. That way when I turn the vest inside out, you can barely see the sewing at all. I make sure to go into every single stitch I can so that it can be secured. Once I reach the end, I automatically weave in the rest of the yarn that's left so that the sewed part won't come undone. I do the exact same thing to the top of the vest, and when I'm done sewing everything together, I can start the last part of the vest, the top and arm ribbings. For the arm cuffs or arm ribbings, you're going to insert your hook into any part of the arm section of the vest. Then attach your yarn and chain 4. After you chain 4, work half double crochet down that chain which will be essentially 3 half double crochets you worked into it. Then insert your hook into the next stitch on the arm cuff area and slip stitch for 3 stitches. Doing this kind of pulls the cuffs towards the ribbing so that the ribbing actually looks nice. It's a bit hard to explain but this was the only thing that worked after 3 different attempts at creating the ribbing for this part. After the 3 slip stitches, turn your work and go back into the chain and work 3 half double crochets down the row. At the end of the row, chain 1 and turn your work and work 3 half double crochets down the row in the back loop only like we did for the bottom ribbing of the vest. After that, slip stitch into 3 stitches and repeat the process until you get to the end of the arm cuff. At the end of the cuff, and apologies for how blurry the video is, you're going to slip stitch once into the stitch that you attached your yarn to, turn your work and slip stitch into the ribbing to close the cuff. Do this for the other arm and then move on to the neckline.
For the neck ribbing, you're going to do the exact same thing as the arm cuffs, except instead of chaining four, I chained five to make it just a tad bit longer. So attach your yarn to the same stitch the left panel started in, and then chain five. After chaining five, work four half double crochets down the chain. After, slip stitch into three stitches and then turn your work to work half double crochets into the ribbing again. After you reach the end of the row, chain one, turn your work, and work down the ribbing with back loop half double crochets. Do this until you reach the end of the right panel where the panel row started. There still should be five stitches open in the center of the vest. Once you reach the end, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Then take your darning needle and what you're going to do is sew the bottoms of the neck ribbing to the center of the vest so it completes the whole V look. Starting from the right side, I just go back and forth into the stitches the same way I stitched the sides of the vest together, going in from the closest loop to the farthest loop so when you pull it inside out, it won't show the sewing stitches. After finishing one side of the ribbing, I automatically go into the other side so it connects nicely when you slightly pull it. Then once everything is sewn together, I weaved in the rest of the yarn into the ribbing and cut it off. Then the vest was finally complete. This is probably the easiest thing you'll ever crochet in your life. Probably. For this project, all you'll need is a 4.5 millimeter hook and some yarn. The yarn I'm using says it's a weight 4 yarn, but it feels like it's like a weight 3. So I decided to use a 4.5 millimeter for this instead of using a 5 millimeter like I usually would. To get started, what you're going to do is create a slip knot and chain the amount that reaches from each side of your waist. For me, that chain number was 40. Once you chain 40, work into the chain with double crochets. To double crochet, yarn over and insert your hook into a stitch. Yarn over again and pull through, making sure you have three loops on your hook. After that, yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Do this for the entire row. Once you get to the end of the row, chain two, and turn your work. After turning, work into the stitches with double crochet again for a total of 22 rows. That's the only thing you have to do for this project. I chose 22 rows because that was enough to cover my boobies, well enough so depending on your size you may be able to do more or less. Once you reach the size you want, at the end of the last row, chain 70. This chain will act as one of the two ties that will let you wear this square top on your body. After chaining 70, chain 1 and cut the yarn, pulling to secure. Insert your hook back into where the first chain started and attach the same color yarn by pulling the yarn through. Then chain 70 once more. At the end of the chain, chain one and cut the yarn, pulling it to secure the chain. I take the time after this to weave in all the ends by inserting the darning needle into the top loop twice.
and then the second stitch loop twice. This is just a random way that I decided to weave in the ends, but if you find a better way to do it, then definitely do that. After weaving everything in, go into the two corners on the side of the square diamond top thingy that we're making and attach your yarn and chain 85 to 90 stitches depending on how long you want your back tie to be. Do this on both sides and then weave in the ends after securing the chain like you did with the top of the project and you're done. For the arm warmers, I'm making them the exact same way I did the diamond top so they can essentially be a set. Still using the 4.5mm hook, I changed 35 which was a good tightness around my arm where I wanted the arm warmers to start. So figure out how long you want the arm warmers to be and then measure the circumference of that area and make the chain 2-3 to three inches smaller so that it can stretch to your arm size when you put it on. After chaining 35, slip stitch the chain into the first chain you made, making sure the chain is going into the same direction so that it won't be twisted. This is joining in the round. Slip stitch by yarning over and pulling through both of the loops. Then chain two. For the whole project, you'll be doing double crocheting. Turn the work and begin to double crochet down the row. To double crochet, yarn over and insert your hook into the stitch. Yarn over again and pull through, making sure you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over again and pull through two, then yarn over again and pull through the last two loops. That is a double crochet. Do this for the entire row. Once you get to the end of the row, slip stitch into the beginning of the row to close the row and chain two. Turn your work and begin to double crochet the new row. You're going to do this for a total of 19 rows if you're doing the same exact length that I am doing for these arm warmers. If you're doing smaller arm warmers, skip this next step which is the decreasing step. Once you reach row 20, you're going to decrease in every other stitch. So first, do one double crochet into the first stitch. And then for the second stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook. What you're going to do now is insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You should have four loops on your hook. Then yarn over and pull through three loops. After that, yarn over again and pull through the remaining two loops. That is a double crochet decrease. You're going to do that into every second stitch, or rather, every second and third stitch since you're decreasing into the third stitch as well. So after that, do a regular double crochet and then a decreased double crochet and keep doing that back and forth for this row only until the end of the row. At the end of the row, slip stitch to close the row, chain two and turn your work. From here, you're going to do regular double crochets for 17 rows. Once you reach the 17th row, you're going to try on the arm warmer and get ready to create the little hole for your thumb. To do this, take two stitch markers and place them in the stitches right next to your thumb, leaving about four stitches in between the stitch markers. Once the stitch markers are placed, you can take the glove off and double crochet normally until you reach one of the stitch markers. Once you reach the stitch marker, add a regular double crochet and then chain 4 for how many stitches are in between the two stitch markers and slip stitch that into the opposite stitch marker.
Once the chain has been attached to the other side of the arm warmer, continue to double crochet normally for three more rows. Once you're completed with the arm warmer, slip stitch the row closed, chain one, and cut the yarn, pulling to secure. You could end the gloves here or add a bit of detailing like I did with this glove. I thought it would be kind of cute if I did something like this, so I tested it out and I actually liked it. To add this little ruffle-like texture pattern detail thingy to the end of the gloves, attach yarn to any of the stitches of the bottom of the arm warmer and chain four. What you're going to do for the entire roll now is add four to five double crochets into every single stitch. This gives the ruffles a more bunched up look, if that makes sense. Once you reach the last stitch, finish the last four to five double crochets in that stitch and then slip stitch the last stitch to the first stitch. Then chain one, cut the yarn and pull to secure. I also did this to the thumb hole as well, and here I'm just showing you the difference of their appearances, but whether you decide to do this or not, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so this was the prototype that I created before I created the actual pattern, just to see if this would even work in the first place and it came out so beautifully that I decided to keep it in the video. Um, this one was made purely just from the one yarn brand that I'll put in the description box below but look at it! It's so cute! It's so cute! And I love how it naturally got bigger on the arms like I didn't do any increases whatsoever and it flows really nicely with either a, a white or black top or you can crochet a top for it, you can do whatever. Um, but this is just the basic outfit that I put with it for now. Um, yeah, I like it. It's cute. Makes me think that I'm a fairy in the garden. In a secret garden. AKA my Discord if you want to join. But yeah, this is really cute. Um, I'm going to show you what the other one looks like on. So this is the one that I created in the video earlier. Um, I really do like this still. For this one, I used three different types of yarn. The first uh, bulky, fuzzy yarn, and then I used a thinner yarn, and then a regular yarn. And the, the arms didn't naturally get bigger, but at the same time, I really like how it's very fitted right here, and then gradually gets a little bit bigger. But if you want the sleeves to get bigger or like super super big you can easily just increase as you go along this is an incredibly easy and quick project to make and you can make literally a thousand of them and wear them all summer long and it's very airy and light enough for this 95 degree weather for some reason and yeah it's very cute and cozy but cozy enough or not cozy enough to make you sweat. Yeah, I really like it. I'm definitely gonna be wearing it this summer. It's cute. It's cozy. Yeah. Okay, so I know I said the last top was my favorite, or did I? I don't remember if I did or not, but this is so cute. I, this was the prototype for the 
last top pattern in this video and this is the first time I'm styling it and it, it goes perfectly with these jeans and it's just it makes like a perfect chill outfit if you're not someone who is more modest in a way but if you're modest you'll probably not want to wear this but it's so cute it's like has an open back it's very perfect for the summer heat and um, as long as you make it the right width like to cover your boobs and like make a long enough tie to actually secure it tightly if it won't fall off then you'll be good to go with wearing this yeah this was the prototype and i just used a random yarn and i I like the random yarn that I used more than the yarn that I used in the actual video, which I'm gonna try on in just a second. This is so cute, and it goes perfect with my skin. It's all neutral tone, and I am the biggest fan of neutral colors. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be wearing this, for sure. Okay, so this is the one that we did in the video. As you can see, I made some matching arm warmers. I was gonna make the arm warmers go to here, but I decided that, or I looked at it and it seemed as if longer arm warmers would look good, as if you're wearing like long gloves or something. Um, and then I added these fuzzy little accents at the end. I'm gonna add it at the top and maybe like at the rim of the shirt, but I just stopped just to see how it would be. Yeah, I personally like the other one a lot more, but this is still really cute and I'm glad that the arm warmers came out perfectly in terms of sizing and everything. This is the look. This is what it looks like from the back. And yeah, the last and final piece that I have to show is the sweater vest. Now, I, this sweater vest caused me a lot of pain, but I persevered and I told myself not to stress out while making it. And I eventually got it done and I'm really happy that I did not give up because I really wanted to be able to learn how to make a sweater vest and be able to teach you how to make a sweater vest. And there's a billion different ways you can make it, but this way I wanted to make it the way that I wanted it to work. And so I didn't want to like change it to fit a different way when I wanted it to be this way, if that makes any sense. But it came out really, really cute. It's perfect for the hot weather. It's very cropped. If you want a longer fit, you can do that. If you want it to be more oversized, you can do that as well. But I made it cropped for summer and for spring and summer. And it's pretty, yeah, it's it's good. I, I like this a lot. And I, I don't know what else to say. I just really like it. I will show you though. This right here was the prototype for the sweater vest. It looks, I only used one color because this was my testing yarn, um, but I put this on and it's just, it was really awkward. This side was a lot bigger than this side and it just didn't work out. So I had to make a few adjustments with everything that I did and this turned into this. So I'm really happy with it. It's really cute, form fitting and stylish. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful in any sort of way. I hope to see you in the next one coming soon. Bye.